is Charlie Kirk, Turning Point USA founder and CEO, speaking at the Republican National Convention. And he's talking about the struggles Gen Z and millennials have under the Biden-Harris administration. With this race so tight, it's the young voters that could be key to winning in November. We're talking about 41 million members of Gen Z eligible to vote this election with 8 million new people now old enough to join and vote. Gen Z is politically active generation. They showed out in 2022 in the midterms and in the 2020 election. Republicans at the RNC this week, including former Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, are making that pitch to the Republican Party and Trump that this could be the generation's cultural revolution. Our message to Gen Z is this. You're going to be the generation that actually saves this country. You want to be a rebel? You want to be a hippie? You want to stick it to the man? Show up on your college campus and try calling yourself a conservative. Say you want to get married, have kids, teach them to believe in God and pledge allegiance to their country. Joining us now, ISI editorial fellow at The Spectator World, J.P. Vasmiel, who writes about Gen Z and American culture. Uh, thank you for being with us. You know, I think about Gen Z and some of these new voters right now and, J.P., what is most important to them. And how concerning is it that some say, I may sit this one out because I don't like either choice right now. Who has the greater challenge, Republicans or Democrats, to reach out to that group? Well, I think that what has happened in the last weeks, I don't know if you've been watching the news, but a lot has happened. It's making it easier for my generation to see Donald Trump as a potential leader. To use my generation's language here, if I may, Donald Trump is a sigma. He got shot and he stood up with courage. You know who doesn't have courage? The person who cannot admit that he has to quit. Joe Biden is a beta. And that's why the leaders of my generation, like Baby Gronk, seem to be moving in Trump's direction. It seems like people my age understand, not just because of the economics of it all and the calculations and the, st and the statistics, but based on the imagery, the feeling, the emotion, that Donald Trump is gonna get more votes from my generation than almost any other Republican candidate in the last 20 years. And would you say, JP, that was true before the assassination attempt, or did that put him over the edge in your mind? Well, in, in the last years uh, with Joe Biden as president, we've seen some progressives deeply dissatisfied uh, with him, so they're not showing up for Biden, but not necessarily that means that they're running toward the Republican Party. But I definitely think that the pro-labor politics of uh, this new Republican Party. We saw the Teamsters uh, president speak at the RNC. Uh, we're seeing Vivek Ramaswamy, Charlie Kirk, and many others appeal to my generation. And I think it's working. We still need to work a little bit more on it. And that's why, I, at least I'm trying to do my best to speak to my generation in their language. But I see the shift. I see the shift, and if we continue to appeal, if we continue to deliver that message, I think Democrats are going to be in for a surprise. You know, immigration is such a key issue among so many different voting blocks. How much of a priority is that, JP, among young voters? I think that young voters, at least well, when I speak as a spokesman for young voters, <laughs> I think we do care about immigration. Uh, we care a little bit more now than than before because we're seeing what happens when you don't you know you don't protect the border. If I talk for myself and for most people my generation, I grew up when you know the, the first election I ever paid attention to was the election of Donald Trump. So when he talked about immigration, I wasn't really aware of like how bad things were. But now that I saw a safe border under Trump and an unsafe border, an unprotected border under Biden. I can see the difference and I can see the impact on the day-to-day -day lives of Americans. I live in Washington, D.C., and, you know, I speak Spanish, Espanol, and I walk around and I listen to so many Venezuelans. And, you know, I grew up in Venezuela for a large portion of my life. And at, at times I go like, wait a second, like, are these the, 
the the migrants crossing the border? Are they here in D.C.? Because from from two years to now, there's so many more, and they're not following traffic laws. They're on their mopeds. They're Venezuela Venezuela buying American streets. Uh, there's a lot of crime, and it reminds me of Caracas. I lived in Caracas, and I was never uh, mugged. I was no one ever tried to steal from me there in Caracas. But now in the capital in Washington D.C. I've had two encounters with criminals. Yeah, safety, so. safety an issue. Hey, <laughs> listen, I'm out of time, JP, but um, Gen Z, you are our future. We have to listen to you, and that includes those at the top of the ticket. It's been fun chatting with you, all right? Thank you very much. Thank you for your voice. All right, New York's governor proposing a major step to combat sexual